found the time to make this video for all of you who have been asking about how I made my very own fitted bodice pattern that I used in my two other puff sleeve dress videos. So here we are today to discuss it. But first, can we just address the um, elephant in the room? It's me. Yes, I did cut off my long tresses of hair, but I really, really love this length. It's definitely a lot lighter, so um, I'm not carrying around five pounds of hair on my head. But enough about me, let's just get into this video, shall we? In this video, I will be showing you five different methods that you can use to create your very own fitted bodice pattern. Now you can use this bodice to create a puff sleeve top, a puff sleeve dress, really anything fitted that you want that has those two princess scenes going down the bust. Now, I personally made my own princess scene bodice using my handy dandy dress form, which I love so much, but I know that not everybody has a dress form and not everybody wants to buy a dress form. So I will be showing you five different methods that have a lot of different materials so that you can choose which one really fits your skill level and the materials that you already own. Just as a disclaimer, I will not actually be showing you how to do all five of these methods. If I were to do that, this video would be about an hour long and neither one of us want that. Instead, I'm going to be explaining these methods, but I will link tutorials and other resources in the description box under every single method so that you can figure out which one you want to use and then go to the corresponding tutorial. If you ever want to try a different method, you can just come back here and then look at a different tutorial. So really, I just want this video to be somewhere where you can have all these resources in one place. If you can trust me, you can trust these tutorials. Something really, really, really important, and I mean really important, so pay attention, is that all of these methods are used to create a strapless bodice pattern. Obviously, with a strapless bodice, you can't actually attach sleeves to it because it's, well, strapless. So after I show you all five of these methods, I will then show you how to modify your own bodice pattern to add an armhole so that you can attach sleeves if you would like to. This will especially come in handy for obviously puff sleeve dresses or tops, just like the ones that I made. After showing you how to do the modification on your bodice, I will then show you how to sew your bodice after you have cut out your pieces on your fabric. If you have watched my other two puff sleeve dress videos, then you will know that you need a shell and a lining. You put them together and pretty much there you go. But I will be going into more detail, obviously, so that you really, really understand how to do this process. One of the easiest methods to create your very own bodice pattern is to use a pattern. Yes, you can buy a pattern off of Etsy or at your local fabric store if you know what to look for. And you can just take the pattern out of the package cut out your size, put it on your fabric, and cut out your pieces. It is that easy. You really don't have to do anything, except you might have to make some adjustments just in case the pattern does not fit you perfectly because everybody has different body types. So you will probably have to make a few adjustments if the pattern does not fit your body perfectly, which it might not. It could be likely, it could be unlikely, I don't know. One of my uh, tips for using this method is that you need to use certain keywords in your search bar if you're looking for a pattern online. If you want a pattern that has those two princess scenes like I use in my videos, then you need to look up either Sweetheart Bustier or Sweetheart Bodice. That will get you the results that you want. If you were to look up something like Bustier, then you'd probably find results for that really complicated corset with bra cups and boning and no. We don't want that. This is by far the easiest method because all the work is done for you. All you have to do is cut out your pieces and sew them together. The second method you can use is using your very own measurements to create your bodice pattern. Now, in the tutorial that I linked for you, the person who made it also included a pattern on her blog. So not only can you use this method, you can use the first method as well. It's a two in one. Oh no. The only thing that might be a little difficult about using this method is that it could be time consuming. You have to take all your measurements, you gotta put them all down on paper, you gotta play connect the dots and put them all together. It's a whole thing. But because it's math and math is reliable, 
this pattern will likely be reliable for you. Obviously, you might have to do some troubleshooting and make some adjustments here and there, but overall, it should yield you the results that you need. Okay, now for the third and for the third and fourth method, I was kind of going in between trying to figure out which one I should put first as the easier method because one requires more money and then the other one is just a little bit more difficult but doesn't require any money. I don't know, but just know that the third and fourth methods are kind of interchangeable. Just figure out which one might be easier for you. The third method that I'm going to be talking about is using your own body as your dress form. So if you do not have the money or if you don't want to buy a dress form, then you can just use yourself. You are your own dress form. I found a TikTok on Pinterest. Yes, on Pinterest. And this girl was using a styling tape on her body to create the lines that she wanted to trace for her bodice. And then she used fabric, pinned it on herself, and draped it on her body. The only thing that might get a little funky about using this method is that your body is um, squishy. Oh gosh, <laughs> why did I say that? But yes, your body is squishy. So it's not like you can just stick your pin in your dress form and it stays there. You have to like carefully put it through your shirt. You have to make sure not to poke yourself. And also you might press down a little too hard on your body and that might distort the lines that you put down. So, you know, you will have to make adjustments. Like I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna have to make adjustments if you use this method, but at least you don't have to spend money on a dress form because you are your own dress form. Hi there. So I think I was dehydrated, so my brain was not working, and I realize now that I did not explain that very well. So I'm here to just clear up any confusion that you may have. Now what I mean by your body is squishy is that your body is soft compared to a dress form which is a lot firmer. Now this can be a problem because when you are draping the fabric on your body and you're tracing the lines to create your pattern, you could be pressing down on your body, which then distorts the lines of your pattern so you won't get an accurate fit. It is an easy fix though, you just have to make sure that you're being really gentle and that you don't press down on your body with your marker or with your pen when you're tracing out the pattern on your body. I will say one slight disadvantage to this method is that it can hurt your neck because you're looking down on your body like this while you're draping your fabric. So it can, you know, hurt your double chin. So <laughs> just gotta make sure that you take breaks so that you can rest your neck because it can hurt your throat actually. That is an advantage to having a dress form, I think, because you have a better vantage point and you can step back from your dress form. You can look at your work, but obviously when you're doing it on your own body, it's a little more difficult. And for your back, you'll probably need someone to do it for you, or you just have to guess. I did find the full tutorial on YouTube, so you can check it out in the description box. The fourth method I will be talking about is actually the method that I used to make my own strapless bodice pattern, and that is using your dress form. My dress form is right there, that's why I'm pointing to her. For this method, you are of course going to need to buy a dress form, but if you are someone who likes sewing, if you like making your own clothes, I highly suggest investing in a dress form because it is so convenient and it is so good for making fitted bodices. You can imagine all the bodices you want and you can drape it on your dress form. So definitely buy one if you want to continue making clothes for the rest of your life, I don't know. In order to make my strapless bodice pattern, I followed a tutorial from Daniela Tabois. She is a black fashion designer and she is very, very, very talented. So you can check out her other videos too, but I did put the tutorial for the sweetheart bodice in the description box. So you can check it out if you have a dress form and would like to use this method. Personally, I followed that tutorial to create my own strapless bodice pattern for my strapless prom dress. Yes, I did make my prom dress, but obviously I never got to wear it because we all know what happened. However, I did get to use my strapless bodice pattern for my puff sleeve dresses. So if you want to um, watch those videos, you should. <laughs> okay, all jokes aside. If you are interested in buying a dress form, there's a whole range of prices that you can go for. My dress form, uh, it was gifted to me 
and I think it was about $50, $60. But the great thing that I really, really love about it is that it's adjustable. So even though it wasn't actually my size when I got it, I did adjust it so that it had all my proportions. So I think that's something that really comes in handy, especially if you want to make clothes for multiple different sizes. If you watch Coolerpa, and I highly suggest that you do, I'm pretty sure she has a dress form from Royal Dress Forms that is definitely a little more high-end, but it's not adjustable. It has like more cushioning on the inside. I don't know what you call it, stuffing? It has more stuffing? I don't know, but apparently it's much higher quality. But if you have never ever used a dress form, definitely spring for a cheaper one, and then you can go on to the more expensive one, you, one blah, blah, blah once you have more experience in using dress forms. For this method, you will need a basic bodice block. Now, what fashion designers use is this basic bodice pattern that usually has a high neck, a shoulder seam, a nice fitted armhole, and two darts. One that comes from the waist up to the apex, and one that either comes from the side seam up to the apex or from the armhole down to the apex. Now, how do these two darts turn into one seam, you ask? Well, it's something called dart manipulation. Through dart manipulation, fashion designers can close or open up some darts or something, I don't know, use a lot of math to create different seams. So I have linked a tutorial that teaches you how to create the basic bodice pattern and then how to modify that basic bodice pattern in order to create the princess seam bodice. Hi again. So I realized that I did not explain dart manipulation that well. So I'm here to do that. Just as a disclaimer, in my opinion, this is the most difficult method out of all of them, but I think it's the most interesting because when you do this method, you're kind of coming out of the home sewer category and you're going into the fashion designer category because this is a skill that fashion designers use. It is very advanced for any home sewer. So if you're interested in learning about what fashion designers do, then this is a really, really great method to get you started. Now, like I said before, there are two darts on the front of your basic bodice pattern. So what fashion designers do is they manipulate those two darts in order to create a new bodice. I've seen a lot of different methods for dart manipulation, but some of the basic ones I've seen are closing one dart, which then opens up another. I've seen fashion designers use their darts as guidelines to split their pattern into different pieces, and then they further manipulate the pieces from there. And I've also seen fashion designers put more paper underneath their darts, which means that they're just adding more fabric pretty much. And when they do that, they're just using the pattern to create more volume or to create galleries or something. That's why you need more fabric for it. So dart manipulation is really, really cool. And you have so many different possibilities from one basic bodice pattern. And for this particular bodice, I think this is a really, really great place to start if you're new to dart manipulation. This is one of the most basic bodices that you can make from dart manipulation. So if you're interested in going into more advanced skills, this would definitely be a good starting point. Now, if you're interested, I have also included another video on the basic bodice pattern. It is from With Wendy. She's one of my favorite YouTubers and she actually taught me how to sew. So this is happening because of her. She did recently do a video on testing two different methods to create that basic bodice pattern. She did use a blog post and then she used a book or some kind of service. I don't really know. I think it was a book. Yeah. So you can check out her video and check out those two methods that she did use. But I have also included another tutorial for you in case you would like to use that. And now onto the interesting part. I will show you how to modify your bodice to add an armhole so that you can add your own sleeves and I will show you how to sew up your bodice so that you can make your very own puff sleeve dresses like me. In order to create my pattern for this demonstration, I used the fourth method. So I draped my pattern on my dress form using the tutorial and I followed it exactly. So if you don't have any styling tape to use on your dress form, you can just use scotch tape, which is exactly what I did. 
all right here are my three bodice pieces this is the center front this is the side front and this is the back piece i know they don't look that pretty right now but what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to cut them out and i'm going to trace them onto new fabric because there isn't really much room for me to modify these bodice pieces which is exactly what i need to show you so that you can make your own puff sleeve dresses and tops so i'm just going to do that right now all right, I have cut out all three of my pieces and I pinned them down onto this scuba fabric. I do recommend using cotton fabric for this entire process. I'm only using scuba fabric because I don't have any extra cotton fabric. We're gonna start by modifying the neckline since it is the easiest part to modify. So when you are making your bodice pattern, I do recommend making your neckline straight because when you do your projects, you can keep the neckline straight on your garment or you can even cut away excess fabric to change the neckline. If you keep the neckline curved like this on your bodice pattern and you want it to be straight on one of your projects, I guarantee you, you will probably forget to add fabric in order to make it straight. That's what I always forget to do when I have to add the armhole to my puff sleeve dresses. So just make sure that you keep it straight. You can always take away fabric, but you cannot add fabric. All right, so it is super easy to make this straight. All you have to do is take a ruler and you just have to extend this fold line up, just like that. Then what you have to do is you have to make sure that you extend from here all the way to this line that you just created. Now you have a straight neckline. What we're gonna do now is we're going to add an armhole here to the side front piece. The first thing you want to do is you want to take your measurement from your princess seam to wherever your armpit starts. For me, that is three inches. So I have my measuring tape right here, and I'm going to measure three inches from this point all the way out. Then I'm just going to connect those two lines. I am not going to use my ruler because I am lazy. Once you do that, you just want to create a gradual curve from that point all the way down to the side of your side front piece just like that okay so i did not measure correctly my measurement is actually two inches three inches is way too far out that pretty much just goes to my shoulder so i'm just going to change it and make it two inches so from here i'm just going to create that gradual curve again to create my armhole once I do that, I am just going to ignore this. Let's, we're going to ignore that. In order to create an armhole on your back piece, you will need to copy the armhole that you made on your side front piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this piece out and then lay it on top of my back piece. I just finished cutting out my side front piece. It is a little rough around the edges, which is why I recommend using cotton fabric and not the scuba fabric that I'm using. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to lay it like this so that the side seams on my side front piece and my back piece match up. And then I can trace the armhole that I put on my side front piece. Once I trace my armhole, I just have to extend this so that it is straight like that. I am not using my ruler because again, I'm lazy, but then this is what it looks like. So you can see that I just extended this way up. So now it's not gonna be so low, it is going to cover more of your back. Now I'm just going to cut out my remaining two pieces and then we're going to add seam allowance to my pieces. All right, so the good news is I did finally find some extra cotton fabric. So I went ahead and I pinned all my pieces on that fabric. I did pin it on the wrong side of the fabric because um, as you can see, it is a pretty loud pattern. So I want you to be able to actually see what I'm doing. So it is on the solid side of the fabric. What we're gonna do now is just add seam allowance to all sides of my pieces. 
except for this one side. This is the fold line of the center front, which means that it's going directly on the fold of your fabric. So you don't need to add any seam allowance here, which is why I've pinned it so close to the edge of the fabric. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add 3 8 inch seam allowance to all sides of my pattern pieces, except for the center back over here. I'll be adding half inch seam allowance instead because all the zippers that I put in in the back will take up half an inch seam allowance. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to use my measuring tape to measure out 3 8 inch seam allowance from the edges of all my pieces. So I finished putting my little dashes. Before I connect them, I am going to trace the actual shapes of my original pattern pieces, just so that on my final pattern pieces, I can see where the actual shape is and where the seam allowance is. Now I can connect all of the dashes. All right, now we are ready to cut out these pieces. Something I do recommend is actually coloring in the seam allowance because that's what I see on a lot of patterns. If my marker weren't running out of ink, I would do that, but we're just gonna leave it like this. Now I'm just going to unpin all my pieces so you can see what your final pattern pieces should look like. All right, so this is what your final pattern pieces should look like. Now I am ready to just cut them out. Right, here are all three of my pattern pieces finally cut out. The last step is to label each piece. I always label my patterns so that I know which pattern is which and so that I don't have random pieces of fabric just lying around in my pattern bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to get a different marker and then I will label each piece. This is obviously going to be my center front so I'm just going to label it C F. That is very messy but it's okay. I also always write how much seam allowance I put just so that I remember. So I'm going to put 3 8 SA. SA is just my abbreviation for seam allowance. I always know what it means, so it's all good. Then I'm just going to li ooh. Then I'm just going to label my fold line. All right. Next we can move on to the side front piece. All I do is just label it SF for side front, and then I label 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now we just move on to the back. So I just put a B for back, 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then over here, I just put one half seam allowance, just because this seam allowance is different than the rest. I know it's so messy, but just make sure that you label your pattern pieces. So there's been a little change of plans. I know that I did mention quite a few times that I would show you how to sew your bodice once you cut out all your pieces on your actual fabric, but here's the thing. I am a pretty busy person, so I have struggled to find the time to even film this video, and now I'm struggling to find the time to finish it, so I unfortunately don't think that I have enough time to film myself sewing up a whole bodice to teach you how to do it, but I am not going to leave you hanging. Luckily, I found a really, really great tutorial from Daniela Tabois, and she shows you how to sew up your bodice with a shell and a lining, and she does it pretty much the exact same way that I do it too. There are only two differences between the way I do it and the way she does it. The first difference is that she uses her center front pattern piece to cut two separate center front pieces. The way that I do it is that I put my center front pattern piece on the fold of my fabric and then cut out one big center front piece. So on her bodice, since she has two separate center front pieces, there is a seam going down the middle. 
for me i don't like that seam so i just put it on folds but it's all one big piece now that is pretty much a personal preference you can have a seam going down the middle if you want it if you don't then you just cut your pattern piece on fold and you're good to go the second difference between the way she did her bodice and the way that I do it is that she added boning. Now I think the reason why she added boning is because in her video she shows you how to do a strapless bustier and when you make anything that's strapless then you do need to add boning in it so that it has some structure and so that it doesn't keep slipping down your body. The thing is, if you make something like a puff sleeve dress or top, you don't really need the boning because the sleeves help keep the garment on your body. So you don't have to only rely on the bodice to keep the garment on your body. The bodice and the sleeves work together to help the whole thing stay up. If you want to make something that is strapless though, then you would have to add boning to add some structure because the bodice is the only thing that can keep itself on your body. So in conclusion, if you want to make something with sleeves, then you don't need to add boning. If you want to make something strapless, then you do need to add boning if you feel like you know how to do it. So with that, you have come to the end of this video. I hope that you found this at least a little bit helpful and a little bit entertaining. So if you have any questions about anything, please do leave me a comment because I will be so happy to answer your questions. And thank you so much for watching.